Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're not talking about career mode, we're actually talking about a competition you'll have to play outside of career mode. It is available in career mode if you do want to start a career mode as one of these teams, but just to make it a little bit easier because you're probably not going to want to start a new career mode this late into FIFA 21, we're going to just play it in regular cup competition mode. So we're going to be talking about the two licensed South American club competitions, the Common Ball Libertadores and the Common Ball Sudamericana. So these are the, basically the same as the Champions League and the Europa League. You've got teams from all over South America. Argentina gets six teams, Bolivia get four, Chile, Colombia, Ecuador, Paraguay, Peru, Uruguay and Venezuela also get four. And then Brazil get the most with seven. So you can probably tell from this, you're going to have some teams that you've never heard of. Because not many of us really know the Venezuelan first division that well. Or the Paraguayan first division, you know. So we're going to have some new players, new teams. And you know that's what I like to encourage on this channel. Giving a go to these new players and finding new favourites that no one else knows of. Personally, I like the Chilean league, although I wish it was still on FIFA like it used to be. Unfortunately, only a couple of the teams are on it, so I don't actually get to play with them in any other mode other than this. But it's still fun to have them on the game in any way and play with them in this game mode, especially as it's all licensed and you have the right graphics, the right trophy and the right commentary lines as well. So it's all pretty fun and pretty realistic to play in. In this video, we're mainly going to be focusing on the Libertadores, which is the bigger competition with the stronger teams, the bigger names that you've probably heard of instead of the smaller ones. So you've got some very famous teams in there. You've got Boca Juniors, River Plate, Fluminense, Barcelona from Ecuador, who actually finished ahead of both Santos and Boca Juniors in the group stage of this year's competition. The competition itself is actually very simple and easy to follow, which is kind of unusual for South American football. A lot of it's complicated with leagues splitting and rejoining and taking place over two seasons, but no, the Libertadores is simple. You have a single group stage with four teams in each group. The top two teams go through to the round of 16, and the third place team goes to the Sudamericana, which is sort of the second tier competition, similarly to how third place in a Champions League group would go through to the Europa League. So this is a totally different competition, as I said, we'll mention that towards the end of the video. But you go through the round of 16, quarterfinals, semi-finals, and finally play the final, which this year is taking place in Montevideo in Uruguay. So that's how the tournament works, but I've said in the title, why is this fun? I'll give you some reasons why this is probably one of the most fun competitions in the game, and hopefully you can give it a go, enjoy it, feedback in the comments, and let me know if you've enjoyed it, or if you found a new favourite South American team. I know from the YouTube analytics, a lot of my channel, about 90% of it is either European or from North America, so you're probably not going to have strong feelings for any team in there unless maybe you like Santos because you like Neymar, or you like Null's Old Boys because of Messi. So what you're going to need to do is just press random team on the Copa de Libertadores or find a list of them and just do a random number generator, find out which team you should start as. They're all kind of similar, of course some of them are a bit stronger, some of them are more famous, some of them have real stadiums, but no matter who you pick, just give a go and try and see if you can win the Copa de Libertadores on the difficulty you normally play. This will give you a chance to experience new players as I've mentioned, but you'll also be playing against new opponents and almost every team in this league has a different playstyle to ones in Europe. It's a lot more intense, you'll hear the fan noise, it'll be a bit more drums and hissing when you've not got the ball, and honestly it's just going to be a fun time for you and it's a good way to spend, it'll probably be around 6 or 7 matches to get through from the group stage to the final. And then you'll have a chance to maybe start again with a different team, do a different competition, do a different career mode idea that's off this uh, channel. You know, there's a lot of choices and this is just a quick thing to help you learn a little bit more about football and a competition that not too many Europeans and North Americans actually pay attention to. So that's the first reason why I think this is fun. You're going to have a new random team, you're going to be finding out about football and you're going to be enjoying yourself. But another thing that I mentioned in there, the atmosphere and the crowds, is another reason why I think this is probably the most enjoyable competition that's on the game. I mean, it's always fun to play the World Cup, as you know off my channel where I did the USA one, but that's only because we give it a bit of prestige in our heads. In the game, it's just the same as any other competition. The Champions League and the Libertadores both have special graphics, they have better crowd sounds, and having all the right teams and right players makes it a lot more fun than the World Cup, where you'll be playing against unlicensed teams like Ivory Coast or Hungary, where they have the fake kits that look a bit ugly, and it just kind of draws you out of the experience of actually playing a World Cup, just because you're not actually playing against what the team would look like. 
The Sudamericana, as I said, we'll talk about it now, is a little bit different. You've got a different set of teams in there, although it's a similar kind of ranking system. Brazil and Argentina both get six teams. Bolivia, Chile, Colombia, Ecuador, Paraguay, Peru, Uruguay and Venezuela all get four. And they're all qualified from the leagues, the first four teams in each league or first six, depending on what country you're from. So you're going to have the best talent from each of the best nations in South America. The lowest ranked nations have to play a preliminary game where they play against a team from another low ranked nation. So for example, uh, Cerro Largo from Uruguay had to play against Penarol from Uruguay, who are one of the better teams from Uruguay. Penarol won 6-3 and they're through to the group stage. The group stage again is kind of similar to the Libertadores, except there's four teams in each one of the eight groups. However, only the first ranked team in each group goes through to the round of 16 because you've got the third place teams from the Libertadores coming down into there as well. So you can finish second in your group. You can even go and beat and finish second and then end up not qualifying if the other teams just got more points than you. So it's kind of unfair, but also it really does put an emphasis on being the best you can and puts a lot of pressure on every single game. Just because it's the second ranked competition doesn't make it bad. You've got teams like Gremio in there. You've got Penarol, as I mentioned before. Messi's former club, Newell's Old Boys, is in here. The other River Plate from Paraguay is in here. Corinthians, Sierra, Bolivar, Bahia, Independiente, of course, always good on FIFA. So you've got a decent amount of teams in there. Big names, too. Or you can go for one of the smaller ones. If you want to go for a very small team, Bolivian side Guabira got a minus 17 goal difference from their six games and won zero. They in fact only scored one goal and conceded 18 in six games. And that one goal came in a 3-1 defeat to Independiente, who were by far the best team in the group. The round of 16 works the same way as the Libertadores, with one winner going through to the quarterfinals in each match, then going through to the semifinals, and then eventually the finals, which is also in Montevideo, Uruguay. They've got a different selection of teams, so again, maybe do a Libertadores, then do a Sudamericana. See which teams you enjoy, and then you'll learn a little bit more about South American football, which of course is one of the strongest areas of football in the world. The leagues might not be great, but the intensity and rivalry and passion in these matches in their continental competitions really does make up for maybe the lesser quality of some of the worst teams in their league. And, you know, you're going to have fun, you're going to enjoy it, and I promise you'll find some new favourite players and some new favourite teams. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more about South American football, make sure you go through my backlog on my channel. I've got quite a lot of videos on South American football and North American football too, if that's more your thing. But anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a like if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more videos. And thank you for watching.